So before we get started, I want you guys to take a look at something. So see, there's six out of seven votes to skip the map, and we had a full lobby of making day. And look right now, only eight people are in the lobby, which means that four people were booted out. And there's a reason why so many people voted against this map, and why those four players were booted from the match. It's because the way that World at War's matchmaking works, it's so ass backwards. So if you have the DLC, or if you don't have the DLC, it doesn't matter, they put you in the same matchmaking lobbies. And that's unlike any other Call of Duty game that we've had that's had DLC, which, you know, they usually, if you have the DLC, what they do is that it, they, they pair you with other people that have the same DLC packs installed, but if you don't have it, they pair you up with people who also don't have it. But with World at War, it doesn't make a difference. If you have it, if you don't have it, it doesn't matter. You're putting the same matchmaking, so if you do not have the DLC, what happens is that they kick you out and say, hey, you have to buy the DLC packs in order to play, and then they kick you out. And that's really frustrating, especially today, because the player base is so low. I saw about 800 people online, like that's the most I've seen. But that player count also includes zombie players, co-op players, and a lot of people are playing zombies, and you don't have a lot of people playing multiplayer. Like, if you actually look at the breakdown in the playlist, it says only like 80 people are playing Team Deathmatch, and all the other modes are dead. So... If you don't have the DLC packs installed, half the time, you're not even going to be able to find a match because even if you do, they're going to kick you out because you don't have the map pack. So if you want to get into World at War in 2020, buying the map packs is pretty much a necessary thing. Like, if you don't have the DLC, you're definitely not going to have a good time just because of how annoying the matchmaking is. But as far as World at War goes, like the actual gameplay, the movement definitely feels very stiff. Like, it definitely feels more outdated than any other Call of Duty game besides obviously Call of Duty 4 because this pretty much is Call of Duty 4 reskinned into World War 2. Now obviously there are a lot of differences between the two games but you know what I mean like it has a similar same engine similar movement and the gunplay is kind of similar and everything just the, the overall atmosphere of the game is very similar except the maps are just incredibly huge in this game and it's kind of annoying because it really it, it, like they try to make it like a battlefield game but it doesn't work like having tanks and vehicles and all that stuff like, there's a reason why we don't have that anymore in Call of Duty, except for Ground War, because it actually works. But with 6v6, it can be really frustrating. And the thing is, this game is 12 years old. You're not going to find a match of Ground War. You're not going to find a game of War, Domination, all the amazing game modes that made World of War great back in the day. You only get Team Deathmatch and Free For All. It, 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 that's pretty much it. You're not going to find anything else. It, it, it kind of sucks, but, I mean, it is a 12-year-old game. You should be grateful that you're even still able to play it. So I'm not going to really complain, but it can, be, it can be really annoying sometimes. But that being said, I think Call of Duty World at War is the most authentic World War II experience that we've ever had in the Call of Duty series. And we, last time we took a look at Call of Duty World War II, that was what my last video was about. And I said, this is a really fun game, but I, the, the whole, like, you know, not historically accurate, it's, it's so frustrating because they said Call of Duty World War II is historically accurate, but... Then you have black female Nazis fighting in the battlefield. Like, eh, not my thing. I know people are saying, well, it's only multiplayer. Multiplayer is supposed to be fun. You should be able to customize your character however you want. But, like, when you advertise that as a historically authentic experience, but you don't have swastikas, you don't have all these things that were in World War II, and then you have, like, a whole bunch of women on the battlefield. I'm sorry, but, like... That's not historically accurate. You could say, well, I don't care about women being in World War II. I don't care about black women fighting for the Third Reich. Hey, that's your thing, but you can't say it was historically accurate at the same time. So, yeah, Call of Duty World at War is definitely the most authentic World War II experience, and it's my favorite World War II Call of Duty game. Definitely one of my favorite World War II shooters, period. I mean, this game is amazing. The single-player campaign is really violent. It's pretty brutal uh, so you know th th that's something that you should definitely be prepared for because that single player campaign oh my god it, it really it, it's really phenomenal i love it and of course this is the first call of duty game to have zombies but the multiplayer has always been the bread and butter of the call of duty series and th this game has an amazing multiplayer i i just love i have so much fun even to this day you know, the movement is a little stiff, like I said, but it's still a really fun game, even after all these years. I mean, World at War is definitely always going to be one of the greatest Call of Duty games of all time. It's just, it, it just is what it is. It's an amazing game, and I think you should definitely check it out if you haven't played it before. 
And this match, oh my god, it was really intense. Like, it was going back and forth. You still have a lot of really good players in this game because most of the people who are still playing World at War have probably played it for a very long time, so they know what they're doing. And oh my god, this game was really intense. I definitely had to post this on YouTube because... Like, I didn't have the best KD, but that doesn't matter. I had a really good time, and that's what it's all about. That's what video games is all about. If you have a good time, if you enjoy yourself, all that KD stuff really doesn't matter. Especially when we're talking about a 12-year-old game. Like, who the hell cares about my KD ratio in Call of Duty World at War? Let's be real. But of course, just because there's a lot of nostalgia with this game, and there's a lot of good memories that I have, it doesn't mean that the game is perfect. There's a lot of problems that especially are felt today. I mean, the Juggernaut and stopping power, and a lot of those overpowered perks from Call of Duty 4, they're in this game, and you have second chance, and a lot of these things that are really unbalanced. And just like Call of Duty 4, there are only three kill streaks. You have the UAV, or recon plane as it's called in this game, then you have the artillery, and then you have the attack dog. So that can kind of get repetitive, that you can't customize your kill streaks, and there are certain things that you can't do, that you're kind of used to being able to do in the newer Call of Duty games. So definitely be prepared for that. If you didn't like Modern Warfare Remastered, you're probably not going to like going back to this game. But at least with this game being so old, we don't have any supply drops or any of that fucking bullshit. But as far as a remaster goes, do you guys want Call of Duty World at War to get a remaster? Let me know in the comments down below, because I kind of have mixed feelings about it. Because on one hand, it would definitely bring new life into the game. You'd have a lot more players and definitely ground war in a lot of those big game modes that we haven't been able to play for years. We'll finally be able to play again. But on the other hand, you're going to have supply drops, you're going to have all this bullshit in the game, all these weird custom camos and outfits and all this crap that kind of diminishes the authentic experience that we had in the original World of War game. So I'm not sure. I kind of have mixed feelings about World of War Remastered. Who knows if we're even going to get it ever? I mean, there's so many games that they're probably going to remaster before World at War. Maybe Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, Modern Warfare 2, you know what I mean? So who knows if it's even going to ever come. But the low player base definitely affects the enjoyability of this game in 2020, especially when it comes to playing the large map 6v6 because you can't do ground war, which is 18 players. And there are a lot of maps that really were made for 18 players that really don't work with 6v6. So it's kind of a shame that this game is kind of dead. But, hey, Macon Day is a really good map. It's pretty much a, a reskin of the original Macon map from the base game. And they just made a DLC out of it. They made the game lighter. So, hey, it is what it is. I, I kind of prefer the daytime version. There's so many good maps in this game. We have so many. We have Station, Dome, Banzai, Courtyard. So there are definitely a lot of really good maps in Worlds at War. A lot of them were remade into Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3. So yeah, there are definitely a lot of great maps in this game that definitely hold up to this day. But, you know, there are definitely a lot of problems playing this game in 2020. The big two being that you can't do ground war with these really large maps with the tanks and everything. Which means those maps don't really play too well today and it can be really frustrating. And also the whole DLC thing. If you don't have the DLC, you're not going to have a good time. So if you're going to play this game, buy the DLC. Prepare to be really frustrated with these large ass maps. And just understand the time in which this game came out. 2008, Call of Duty was much different back then. You didn't have custom kill streaks. You didn't have all these things that we come to expect now from the Call of Duty series. The weapon customization is very limited. Everything is really limited. So expect that if you want to play this game. Don't expect it to be anything like Modern Warfare 2 or Black Ops or especially none of the newer Call of Duty games that we have now. I mean, it's just completely different. Especially the zombies. It was the first Call of Duty game to have zombies. So a lot of the experience is very simplistic compared to Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3. So, you know, and especially like with Black Ops 1, you can play the old Call of Duty World of War maps. They're remastered into that game with the Resurrection DLC. So this game probably isn't too necessary if you're a Zombies fan because there's so many other ways to access those original maps. But hey, if you're into Call of Duty history or even history in general, you're into the whole World War II thing, this is definitely a must play because... This was a really important game in the Call of Duty series. It was the end of an era, you know, going back to World War II, and we wouldn't have a World War II game until 2017, which was nine years after Call of Duty World at War. So this really did mark the end of an era for the Call of Duty series because Call of Duty was traditionally part of World at War, but it was kind of moving on to the modern setting, and this game was kind of part of that transition in the Call of Duty series. And you could see how the Titus turned in this match. I mean, we were winning, we were dominating, and then the other team was winning, and it was back and forth and back and forth. 
and I'm just trying desperately to help my team out and kill this enemy right here so that we can possibly win, but it's not looking good. We got 10 seconds left. Come on, come on. We got to win. Two kills. We got to catch up with the team. Oh, I killed a dog, but I, I come on. We got to do something. Oh my god, no. We're going to lose. Oh, we did so well, and yeah, we lost. But that was a really fun game. And yeah, 37-22, not a great KD, but hey, overall, Call of Duty World at War is still a fun time in 2020. The gunplay is amazing. Everything is great. You know, there's some things that make you like, yeah, this game is really old, but it's still a really good time. And I definitely recommend that you check it out. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about World at War, if you still play it, if you never played it before. But that's pretty much it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you later. Bye.